Hello and welcome everybody. Today I want to show you a new and open source photogrammetry tool called Meshroom. It actually hasn't been released yet officially, so I went through the process of compiling it myself and did some first tests with it. And I must say I'm quite amazed by the results um, it gave me. First and foremost, the user interface looks really modern and clean and the mesh that it generated also looks super clean and nice. But of course you don't just want to hear me talking, so let's have a look at Meshroom. And now we are in Meshroom itself. So let's drag and drop some images into here. Uh, these images are from the Edgisoft website, the link will be down below just in case you want to follow along or something like that. Here you can see that on the left hand side we have sort of um, the area where we can sort of check our source images. So for example whether or not they are in focus or we want to remove them or not. But uh, I think all images that are here actually look quite fine and I want to use them for the 3D reconstruction. Here on the uh, right hand side we have a little 3D viewport. You see I can uh, pan around and rotate and everything like that. And down below we have a node editor. The really cool thing about a node based workflow is that uh, first of all you see sort of the steps that are involved in uh, recreating a 3D mesh out of several images. Secondly, um, you can easily generate variations of your mesh or textures. So for example, I could add in, um, let's say, a second meshing node by simply right clicking and adding in meshing. And then of course I would need to connect those wires, but I will skip that for now. Um, because I just want to demonstrate the sort of thing you can do with a node-based workflow. So I could um, start and tweak some of the options here and then I would sort of create a second branch of data. And based off those, or of this modified data, I get a different mesh and a different result. So it's actually quite easy to uh, sort of create variations of my mesh and even um, of my textures. So I could, uh, for example, also add in a second texturing node, connect, of course, all those wires, and then say that my original texture here should use a texture downscale of two, and my other texture uses a texture downscale of uh, four or eight, and one texture would be for my game engine and the other one would be for my um, path tracing rendering engine that can actually handle larger texture sizes. But we won't do any of that uh, var variation creation now. So we are simply going to hit that start button up there and you see Meshroom starts to calculate, um, starts to calculate uh, each single node. But this takes actually quite long, so for this model it would take about three hours to get a final mesh. So I will um, cancel this and we are going to have a look at the end result in Blender itself. And here we can see the reconstructed mesh from Meshroom. And I must say I'm really amazed by the result. You see, Meshroom did a really great job at maintaining the details and not producing any major surface imperfections. And of course we have some rough areas in here, but if we apply the smooth modifier, you see most of those little surface imperfections are gone. And this mesh is pretty much ready to use. But now I want to compare it with the 3D mesh that came with this image set and especially once we start to compare the mesh from Meshroom with the mesh that came with the image set, uh, you'll see that Meshroom did a way better job. 
Of course, uh, to be fair, you have to take into consideration that this mesh actually got processed. So the, the vertex count got decimated and therefore you lose some of the details. And also you get some of those little artifacts. But still, uh, especially if we look at the, the area here on the legs, for example, you see that Meshroom already performed better. And especially if we start uh, to look underneath the skirt, you see that Meshroom generated a clean mesh where the 3D model that came with the image set includes a lot of blobby mesh geometry and also some holes. So now let's have a look how I would process this mesh or actually clean it up. The first step was to actually um, apply a smooth modifier and you see uh, the, the surface already got a lot cleaner. And then I would apply a decimate modifier to my mesh and clean up some of the bigger mesh parts that I don't need. Once I have applied that decimate modifier and there I would uh, drop the ratio to about 0 0.5 so you get only half of the vertex count from your original model. Then I would apply those two modifiers and start to do some manual cleanup in sculpt mode. So you see I've um, actually smoothed out some of the area here and I've also added in some surface details. So for example here in the face area I creased the hairline and I've also added in um, some creases here around the mouth area and in general I did the same with the rest of the model. Then I took it to another open source tool called Instant Meshes. If you don't know it, make sure to check out my video that I've done in the past because Instant Meshes is a super great retopology program. Uh, of course, it doesn't allow you to, uh, to define sort of the geometry flow, but it's perfect for a quick uh, retopology where the only goal is to get a quad based mesh and that's what we have here and yeah let's go into edit mode and you see that we get only uh, quad geometry and this is really handy if you want to apply a multi-resolution modifier to again start detailing the surface or to add in uh, more details and yeah, that was basically it. Definitely make sure to uh, let me see some of the meshes you have generated with Meshroom once it has been released. So either tag me on Twitter at underscore 3D escape or uh, I don't know if it's possible, but actually comment some links down below. I'm pretty sure there's a way. And yeah, I would just love to see uh, what you came up with. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumb up. That would help me out quite a lot. And you might even consider subscribing to my channel for further videos in the future. And otherwise, I can just say that I wish you a really nice time until we see us in my next video. Bye.